Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It has been, I'm sorry, I know, a little bit since I've filmed for you guys any videos, but work has been extraordinarily busy and I've been taking a lot of extra shifts and a lot of extra hours to make sure you guys' pets actually get medical attention. So kind of neglected um, you guys here on the channel and I'm sorry, but we are gonna get back into it today. Um, you guys have left me tons of comments and I've tried to answer all your questions um, in a timely fashion and read all your suggestions as to foods that we should take a look at. And um, a couple of you guys mentioned one called Zeewee, so we're going to do that today. Um, just to lay a couple ground rules, my name is Dr. Ray and I'm a small animal general practitioner. Uh, and on this channel, we kind of do uh, first impressions of a lot of foods. And so there are so many pet foods on the market now, they are so overwhelming. Um, these are first impression reviews, meaning we're just gonna do the quick and dirty. We are not going to dive into molecules. We are not going to be judgmental. We are not going to call people out. We're just gonna look at the package. We are gonna call out um, marketing. We are gonna try to look for things that um, big corporations do to try to trick us. But we all wanna do the same thing. We all wanna do what's best for our pet. So we are going to be kind and friendly and we are gonna take a look at some pet foods today. If this is your jam and it interests you, welcome. Um, feel free to like and subscribe and let's do some pet food label reviews. Well, not reviews, one review. We're gonna do Zeewee. So um, if you guys are following along, you can go to zeewepets.com. I have not looked at this food at all. All I did was make sure they had a website. So this is gonna be my first time looking at it and your first time maybe looking at it as well. Apparently Zeewee is a New Zealand brand. Um, so that's interesting. They have both dog and cat food. So. Let's see, they have a philosophy. What is their philosophy? Ethically um, sustained ingredients. So that is obviously important. We wanna be responsible when we're sourcing um, any of our food. So, so that's awesome. You get a picture here of what New Zealand is known for and it looks like those are sheep. So that'd be interesting if this is a lamb-based diet. Gently air dried. Now that's something we haven't um, we haven't really looked into before. Ready serve raw alternative. Unlike conventional dry foods that are mass produced and cooked at high temperatures, our recipes are prepared simply. Interesting. Blend, pour, air dry. Uh, I you know I'm not so much interested in the blending, the pouring, the cutting, and the packaging, but I am kind of interested in air drying and what that means and what that means for food safety. Making good food takes time. Slow and gentle air drying process removes pathogenic bacteria while blocking in the goodness of our ingredients. Every batch is prepared naturally from free from artificial flavoring. I will have to do some more research on what actual air drying is um, and is air drying the same as dehydrating. Um, it doesn't sound like it's freeze drying, but it seems like maybe it would be simple um, it might be simply a different term for dehydrating. So that might be a marketing tool. Um, it sounds like the food, it's making it sound like the food isn't cooked. They're doing this preservation process, which is air dried and not cooking because they mentioned not um, using high heated temperatures. So um, we'll continue to go through the food. And then what I will do is I will do some research and then I'll pop in a little um, maybe educational seminar if I can find it on what air drying really is. And so you can go to the good old Google and find out that air drying is a process in which all the moisture is removed from the ingredients through evaporation. Uh, so the moisture is removed, but they remove it with very little heat. And so as I was perusing, I actually got directed back to Zeewee's website and they actually have a really nice explanation of the process. It was hard to find originally, but we have found it. So freeze drying, and we've talked about freeze drying before, this is a process where the food is preserved with a strong vacuum. And so the vacuum is the main process that the moisture is removed and they'll bring it all down to uh, 3%. Freeze dried uh, foods, 
They don't necessarily kill bacteria. So if there's bacteria in it and then you rehydrate freeze-dried foods, um, you are gonna get the bacteria basically rehydrated. Air drying is a process basically the same except they don't use the vacuum. They're gonna use um, air that's gently circulated and they're gonna remove the moisture with this circulated air. It's not heated and they remove moisture up into a 14%. Dehydration, they don't explain, but basically dehydration is a very similar process to air drying, except not um, only do they circulate the air, the circulated hair, uh, air is heated. And so I also went ahead and I went to my personal um, information network for veterinarians. And so, and so veterinarians, um, a lot of us will have access to what's called the Veterinary Information Network. This is basically a subscription of veterinarians and it's a conglomeration of veterinarians and veterinary specialists around the world. And you can ask questions and then specialists will kind of chime in. And so this is a really good resource for veterinarians to get the latest and the greatest and have access to the greatest minds um, in veterinary medicine. And so there were a couple questions, not very many, regarding um, air dried and freeze dried food and are there benefits to them? Um, the first one was from 2015 and uh, the question was posed about the safety of air dried food. And so this particular person um, had a client that was wanting to feed basically the same food, the air dried ZVP lamb and duck food. And um, as many veterinarians are, they're not a fan of raw food, but the client was interested, so she wanted to get some more information. Apparently, the process, at least in 2015, was um, it was eight hours total. Uh, they did seven hours and 50 minutes at 104 degrees, and then they did 10 minutes at 137 degrees, and that was in Fahrenheit. And she wanted to know what's the safety of that. And so the uh, board specialists chimed in. Um, this particular board specialist was from Barcelona and in their opinion um, and based on their many, many, many degrees, so they've got a BSc, a PhD, a DACVN, a DAECVN, uh, they did not feel that that particular amount of time in that temperature would result in a, a food safe or a diet that was um, safe enough to feed. They worried about things such as E. coli and um, salmonella. And so there were some questions about the safety of feeding an air dried food. So that's their philosophy. Their philosophy is they should have um, ethically sustained ingredients and then they um, do this gentle air dried formula to, to try to preserve it and make it the most nutritious as possible. So that's their philosophy. Let's see what they've got for recipes. Um, they've got wet food for dogs, they've got treats, they've got the dry version, and then on the cat side they have canned and then they have dry as well. So I think, so let's see. So we've got venison, we do have the lamb, we've got free range chicken, more lamb, 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 and then they do have a beef. So since we are doing, uh, we're doing New Zealand and I think of lamb, and sheep when I think of New Zealand. Let's do the peak lamb for dogs. Let's look at that package. All right, so um, on the right-hand side, we've got a really nice description um, of what is going to be included. So it says um, peak nutrition for all life stages. And so for any of you that have been following this channel um, for a period of time, you know that ideally, um, I look for a food when I'm going through the package and I'm trying to pick one. I don't typically like food that says all life stages. It is ideal, in my opinion, that if you can find a food that is specifically tailored to your pet's life stage, that's going to be better. Um, it's not to say that all life stages is bad. It's just that it is kind of lazy um, to make a food all life stages because what they're doing, um, excuse me, what they're doing is they are not they're making one food that they can sell to the masses and they're not specifying the nutritional needs and um, acknowledging that different life stages have different nutritional needs so a puppy or a pregnant dog is going to have really high nutritional needs if you think about it you take a puppy um, and they all look the same when they are born trust me i do see sections on a regular basis and you cannot tell the difference between a rottweiler puppy when they are born 
from a Yorkie puppy when they are born. They look almost identical. And so um, you take a puppy like that um, and you accelerate it to grow. It's full, you know, from less than a pound, less than half a pound, um, up to a 100-pound Rottweiler in less than a year. That requires a lot of energy, and that's your puppy, you know, your puppy life stage. To say that you need to feed an adult that obviously is not growing at all, if not growing fatter, in its, you know, one year to 12, 13, 14, 15, we hope, and have the same energy requirement for rapid growth, it, it's not. And so we find that, um, you know, if you feed the incorrect life stage, you're, you might gonna be having some trouble with obesity. You might gonna be having, you might have some trouble with obesity. Um, and so that's what it means by all life stages. They have to feed the most rigorous life stage and that's going to be um, the puppy growth stage. So essentially all life stage foods are puppy foods. So um, I'll put a, a timestamp if um, maybe everybody doesn't wanna listen to that long explanation, you can fast forward, but that's my soapbox on all life stages. So, so number one thing I look for is gonna be life stages. It says, um, Let's see if we can look at the package and find where the uh, AFCO statement is. Okay, so they are saying feed Zeewee daily to your dog using the guide below. For puppies and pregnant nursing females, feed approximately double the amount indicated in two to three feedings. So they are acknowledging that um, there are gonna be some different feeding recommendations based on your pet's life stage, so that is good. So if you feel okay with working, um, working with that and feeding, um, the thing is you might have to feed your pet a smaller volume. Um, it sounds like if you have a regular adult and you don't have a puppy or a breeding um, you might have to, oh, am I going to get in trouble for saying the B word? I mean, it is a, hmm, I might have to bleep that out. Where was I? Now I've gotten myself all confused and flustered. So if you have a pregnant dog or you have a puppy, um, it is acknowledging you're going to have to feed twice, two to three times the volume. Yeah, double the amount indicated in two to three feedings. So it's going to be, um, if you have a dog that's used to having a certain amount with this food, they may have to get a smaller amount, which might make them um, unhappy and may, they may be begging for food because the volume is going to have to be smaller. So keep that in mind. Um, I am looking for the AFCO statement. Now, we may not be able to find it because AFCO is an American thing. It's an American um, requirement. And so this food may not have it, but usually they'll have their version of some sort of a regulatory Regu regulatory nomenclature, uh, and they do have AFCO on there, and so that's that's really awesome. So Zeewee Peak Lamb Rice, or excuse me, Zeewee Peak Lamb Recipe is formulated to meet the nutritional levels established by AFCO for all life stages, including the growth of large size dogs, 70 pounds or more as adults. So there we get a little bit more information. So we already knew that it was all life stages. So, you know, we got that from the, the verbiage here on the website, but there's a couple other important things the AFCO statement is telling us. One is it's formulated. And so what that means is they've simply taken a recipe um, and they followed that recipe, but they haven't actually fed the food to um, animals to make sure that there aren't any hiccups that they weren't anticipating. And so they just followed a recipe. They didn't, um, they didn't feed it to any animals. And so if, again, we're trying to find the absolute best and we're just reading through the label and trying to eliminate some foods, um, you know, very quickly, you can try to look for foods that are feeding trials because those have been fed to animals to substantiate their claims. And so it's not just them simply saying, well, we followed the recipe, so it should be okay. A company is actually putting the time and the money and the effort to do a feeding trial. And it just shows to me a little bit more integrity in a company if they do a feeding trial. But there aren't very many that do, so you would probably be limiting your options if that is something that you um, are really going to hold steadfast to. The other bit of information here that is interesting that they left out is that not only is this basically a puppy formula, it's a large breed puppy formula. So they're saying there um, it is acceptable not only for life stages, 
all life stages, but for all life stages, including the growth of large size dogs, 70 pounds or more as an adult. So this is actually a large breed puppy um, formula. Now, what I want to do is I want to see, I noticed here on the top of the website, they have a feeding calculator. Um, and I want to go to that and I want to see if my assumptions are true that this food is going to be really high maybe in fat and calories. And so that's why they're suggesting doing kind of like double for certain life stages and then um, a different serving for, you know, for adults. So um, this is actually a really nice feature and we'll check it and see if it works. So on the left hand side, you pick dog or cat, you, t you pick the type of food that you want. So air dried or canned, um, you pick the protein that you're going to be using. So we'll select um, lamb because that's what we're doing. And then here you tell it uh, the life stage. And so that's, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. So let's find, um, let's do the average adult. I mean, a lot of us just have average adults. Uh, you can do pounds or kilograms. I'm in America, so we're gonna do um, we're gonna do pounds. So let's say a uh, 20 pound dog. All right. So on this side, then it calculates and it tells you um, how many k cows per day, how much to feed in ounces, and then how many scoops that's going to be. And then down here, they define a scoop as one full scoop weighs approximately um, two ounces or 56.7 grams. And so let's do a calculation. Um, and we've gone over the calculation before and how you actually figure that out. Um, and this is a good website for you guys. And I'll link it down below. You can go to uh, the Ohio State University's Veterinary Medical Center um, webpage and they have a very nice explanation on how we come up with resting energy requirements and a little chart and the calculation but the calculation is um, 70 times the weight of the pet in kilograms to the three-quarter power and so that's the resting energy requirement and so that's kind of your baseline um, after that you can do different factors to try to calculate um, you know, for different life stages. So, you know, if you have a neutered uh, adult, you know, they suggest you can do 1.6 times the resting energy requirement if they're obese prone, um, 1.2 to 1.4 and so on and so forth. There isn't a place on this calculator where you can just uh, plug it in and it tells you you actually have to do the math. So let's do the math. We did, um, we said 20 pounds. So we gotta find our, uh, how do I get to the scientific version of this? All right, so if we do 20 pounds, so 20 pounds is um, nine kilograms um, to the three quarter power, okay, which is 5.19 times 70. I'm only getting 363. And they're saying 523. Maybe they're using um, neutered adult or in. Let's try that times 0.6. Yes, that's what they're doing. Okay, so I think this calculator is pretty spot on. So this is a nice, um, a nice calculator here on their website for their food. So it does kind of add up if you use the uh, resting energy requirement and you use for an, a neutered adult. Uh, this calculation is correct. All right, let's go to the guaranteed analysis. And let's see what that looks like. Now this is, we already established a large breed puppy. Um, so it's, it's probably gonna follow large breed puppy parameters more closely but it's being marketed as an adult food. Um, at least the package is, is making us feel like it's an adult food. So that's what we're going to um, review it for. And let's see, does it have the guaranteed analysis here for us? It does. All right. Let's find our little... No, that's cat. Uh, 
All right, we're going to put it right in the middle. So these numbers, these parameters come from Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. I'll link it in the description below. Um, I just put the numbers that they um, provide in the textbook into this chart so it's easy for us to review. So um, crude protein, they're at 35%. It's a little bit higher than we like. Uh, we would prefer it to be between 15 and 30%. Um, these are supposed, when I do it, it's supposed to be on an as-fed basis. I assume this is on an as-fed basis because it does not um, state otherwise. And so this is a little bit over in protein, and the reason is most likely because this is a large breed puppy, and we'll have to pull the large breed puppy parameters to see if that is correct. Now, what is the problem with having too much protein? Um, the problem with having too much protein is that a lot of people, even humans, feel like the more protein you get, the better, you know, healthier you are. The more protein you build, more muscle you gain, more muscle. The problem is, is um, excess protein has to be processed by the body. If you have a dog that is not exercising and working out and has the need to build more muscle, that protein is not is going to have to be filtered out of the body. It doesn't just hang around. And so the organ that does that is the kidneys. And so excessive amounts of protein require the kidneys to work a lot harder than necessary. And what that does is it leads to kidney failure at a younger age. So more protein, if your dog doesn't need it, is not really good. Um, and then once the kidneys kind of poop out, and they push protein out of the body inappropriately, at that point, trying to give your dog more protein only exacerbates the problem. And so ideally, you don't want um, a food with excessive amounts of protein, especially if you have a pet that already has underlying kidney disease or is a senior pet. This is going to be um, a little bit tough on them. Um, the other thing to notice is that this is a minimum. So it's a minimum 35%. It could be even more than that. It could be 40%. It could be 50%. I don't know what um, that percentage is. You'd have to call the company and see if they have the exact data on that. Uh, fat, they're at 33%. Um, we ideally want 10 to 20, so it's, it's really high on fat. Fiber, they're at 2%, and we want less than 5, so that's fine. They are not listing on their website the uh, calcium or the phosphorus, which again is a really important parameter, especially if you're trying to feed this dog to, or this diet to an older dog um, or a senior or a pet that already has underlying kidney issues or maybe is on food or is on maybe chronic medications for heart disease or something like that that utilizes the kidneys. Um, I would be really concerned and want to maybe call the company and see if they have the calcium and phosphorus content before considering this food. I don't like it when they don't list it. I would wish, you know, to me, before I purchased a food, if I was in the pet store and I wanted just to use the label to kind of like pick something really quick, I would probably avoid foods um, that don't list the calcium and phosphorus content because that's really important to know. And um, if you go back on some videos in this channel, most of the time if they omit the calcium and phosphorus content, it's because it's way out of range. And so I'm um, just going on a, a limb there to say that, but that has typically held true. So not really happy about that. Uh, I am going to pull, let's go ahead and pull the large breed puppy. All right, so here's large breed puppy. 20 to 32, it's still out of range for a large breed puppy. Um, fat, 8 to 12 here. Fat is 33%. I just, it, that just blows my mind that the fat in this diet is 33%. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. I'm a little bit floored by that fact. The only thing I could say is maybe this is not on an as-fed basis. Um, download full typical. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, it's as-fed. It is as-fed. The nice thing is they did go ahead and list here the calcium and the phosphorus. All right, let's pull the dog back up and see where we're at with the calcium. Okay, so as we suspected, the calcium is at 1.88, which is way out of range. The phosphorus is at 1.43, which is extremely out of range for the adult dog. And then on the large breed puppy, um, calcium needs to be 1.2, and it's way out of, way out of range for that, um, and it's way out of range for the phosphorus. So, uh I, you know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but this is not really looking like it's something that 
I would personally feed my pet. Of course, this is um, this channel is not necessarily about telling you guys what to feed your pet or making dietary recommendations. I'm just trying to give you uh, tips on how to read labels. So, you know, take this information um, with a grain of salt and obviously consult your veterinarian on what might be more appropriate for your pet. But in general, I'm getting a little bit concerned about this diet. Let's check on, um, the, you know, the other thing I usually like to do is see does, you know, this, does this food have a lot of dyes in it? And so how you can do that is you can go to the ingredient list. Uh, and usually the dyes are going to be on the bottom because dyes have a really low molecular weight. And so, so we got a lot of lamb, tons of lamb. Um, and this is a key thing, and I want to point this out to you guys. I don't do a whole lot with ingredients on this channel. I know that's a really controversial thing. And um, people always come for me in the comments about ingredients. Ingredient lists are one of the most deceiving parts of the package. And the reason why I don't go over it isn't because I don't care what ingredients are in the food. I don't go over it because companies manipulate this to high heaven. Um, and it's very deceiving and it would take more time than I think the average person would want to do if they're just trying to um, get through their daily life but still do something good for their pet. And so this is a keen example. The first ingredient is lamb, then you have lamb heart, lamb tripe, lamb liver, lamb kidney, lamb lung, um, you know, then they have some green muzzle, which I've read is really good, uh, lamb bone, and so all of this is lamb. What they have done is they have done, they have split the lamb into multiple parts. The reason why they have done that is they want people to think there's a lot of lamb in here. When in reality, they could have just put the first ingredient as lamb and then skip to New Zealand green muzzle and then skip to dried kelp. But they've split the ingredients of lamb into its little constituent parts so that in your mind, you guys are thinking, wow, look, the first five ingredients are lamb. That's really deceiving and that's all marketing. 100% all marketing. It's used to draw you guys in and to, to be honest, to me, that's a put off because I don't like it when pet food companies try to manipulate people. Um, so that's what you have here. Um, looking though, what we were here for was to see if there were any dyes and there aren't. So yay for that. No dyes in this food. The last thing I always like to evaluate is the cost. And a couple of you guys mentioned that you are aware that this is a very expensive food, but you wanted to know if it was worth it. And so uh, the largest size bag that you can buy is eight pounds, which is not very big. A lot of the foods that we review, the package size is like 40 pounds. And so the fact that it only comes in the largest and eight pound bag is a little bit, a little bit kind of, whoa. All right. <laughs> For an 8.8 .8 pound bag, I assume this is American dollars. I don't know. It's $161.48. Praise be, you get free shipping if your order is over $50. Ah, I don't even know what to say about this. Hmm. All right, so 161.48, wow. That is $18.35 a pound. Okay, well, I am going to leave you guys with this information. Um, I think this was a very interesting one. I. I'm not quite sure <laughs> what to say about it. I am going to say that this is probably not a diet for me for multiple reasons. However, if you're feeding this food and it's worth it to you and you like it and your pet is doing great, I want you to keep trucking on. I don't want to deter um, you from doing something that's working for you. However, I would have to say for me, this is not going to be something I would recommend for the following reasons. One, it's all life stages. Two, it's formulated. Um, three, I don't like the marketing traps that they have employed with trying to split that lamb that's just there to suck you in. Um, I don't like the out of range guaranteed analysis on pretty much every single parameter other than fiber. I don't like the price, that's just for me personally. Um, I know that that is individual. 
Um, what I do like is I do like the feeding calculator. That was really helpful and I really liked that. So I do hope that um, you know you guys will take these things into consideration when you're feeding your pet. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I have missed you all so much. I hope to see you guys real soon. And if you want to see part two on cat, let me know. Or if you guys are like, eh, we're over Zeewee, then I won't, uh, I won't do the cat version. So I'll catch you guys later.